From the author of Dragons Love Tacos, Adam Rubin, and the illustrator of The Legend of Rock, Paper, Scissors, I present to you Gladys the Magic Chicken. Gladys the Magic Chicken Published by G. P. Putnam Sons. This all happened a long, 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 long time ago. Three thousand years before your grandma's grandma's grandma was born. We call it ancient times. And in ancient times, they talked like this. Lo and behold how this chicken doth dance after feasting. See that dancing chicken kid? That's our hero. That there is Gladys. Every day, Gladys followed the sheep, who followed the dog, who followed the shepherd boy, through the mountain pass. The shepherd boy worked all day and never went to school, because in ancient times, school had not been invented yet. It's true. Look it up. Well, the shepherd boy, he never learned how to look things up or how to read, or write, or know science. So understandably, he was not nearly as smart as you are. For instance, one day the shepherd boy found a puddle, which he thought was a hole in the ground with an upside-down boy inside. To be fair, the shepherd boy had never seen his own reflection before and after a few minutes of waving, he did eventually realize he was looking at himself. He was horrified. Misery and woe! I'm hideous! cried the shepherd boy suddenly, which frightened Gladys, who plooped out an egg. He wept and wailed and pounded his fists in the mud. Gladys nuzzled the boy's neck to comfort him. Oh, Gladys, sighed the shepherd boy, I wish that I were beautiful. Years passed, and the shepherd boy changed. His arms became thick, and his chestnut hair fell past his shoulders. He grew strong, wrestling the sheep to give them haircuts. Shepherds call it shearing, but the sheep call it <laughs> that strapping shepherd boy could shear a sheep in 67 seconds flat. Though, it should be noted, clocks had not been invented yet in ancient times. One day, a traveling merchant came to the mountains. His wagon was full of treasures from far away lands. Spices! The shepherd boy had never tasted pepper. Fabrics! The shepherd boy had never touched silk. And rarest of all, a shiny, polished looking glass. Well, heck, the shepherd boy hadn't seen his reflection since all those years before in that muddy puddle. So, at first, the handsome face in the mirror startled him, but this time it only took him one wave to figure it out. The shepherd boy was overjoyed. He scooped up Gladys and kissed her smack dab on the beak. This confused the traveling merchant, who had seen many strange things in his travels, but none quite as odd as a shepherd smooching a chicken. Gladys hath granted my wish to be beautiful, declared the shepherd boy. Tis a magic chicken, a magic wish-granting chicken. 
This intrigued the traveling merchant. He proposed a trade. And that's how the traveling merchant wound up riding away with Gladys in his wagon, while the shepherd boy was left with a shiny new looking glass in which to admire himself. Gladys had never been down from the mountains before. She'd never seen the shimmering sea. She'd never heard the wind whip through the wheat. She'd never smelled a tired old donkey. Magic chicken, get your magic chicken here. Every wish granted responds to Gladys. No wishing prior to purchase. The traveling merchant shouted till his throat was sore. The villagers in the market bought magic stones and magic bones, but for some reason none of them believed a chicken could be magic. I wish I was rid of this stinking chicken, muttered the traveling merchant as he packed up his wares. And just like that, he realized that Gladys was gone. A long bearded bandit had stolen Gladys away and was planning to eat her for dinner. Ye be a magic chicken, eh, Gladys? chuckled the long bearded bandit as he lit a fire under his pot. Well, I wish to visit the palace of the purple Poobah. The long bearded bandit laughed and laughed a little too loudly, actually, because a brave swordsman overheard the commotion and decided to investigate. Hark, thief, from whence did ye pilfer this chicken? The brave swordsman deftly disarmed the long bearded bandit and bound him with rope. He rescued Gladys. Then he carried the thief to the palace of the purple Poobah and threw him in the dungeon. Curse you, magic chicken! This is not what I meant! cried the long-bearded bandit. A sudden blast of trumpets startled the brave swordsman, but not as much as Gladys, who plooped out an egg that went splat on his shoe. Flower girls threw petals, musicians played and danced, and the soldiers of the royal guard marched in perfect unison as they carried the purple poobah toward the palace. To march in the royal guard was the greatest wish of the brave swordsman. So when the purple poobah passed by, he puffed up his chest to look as brave as possible. Pardon me, brave swordsman, said the purple poobah, but why dost thou carry a chicken? The brave swordsman blushed and bowed. Tis said to be a magic chicken, your highness. The purple poobah chuckled. He was always skeptical of any so-called magic, but there was something undeniably amusing about that chicken. He decided she would make an excellent gift for his daughter, the learned princess, who, by the way, had become learned thanks to private tutors. Remember, there were no schools in ancient times. In exchange for the chicken, the brave swordsman was invited to join the royal guard, just as he had wished. Thank you, Gladys! he called as the purple poobah carried her away. The purple poobah had a thriving kingdom, a lovely palace, and a vault full of magnificent jewels, but all he really wanted was for his only daughter to be happy. When the purple poobah opened the learned princess door, she hurled an urn past his head, it smashed to pieces against the wall, which is a shame, really, 
because nowadays an urn from ancient times would be worth a million dollars at least. I offer a gift, protested the purple Poobah. Tis a magic chicken named Gladys. Get out of my room, screamed the learned princess. The purple Poobah left the chicken, shut the door, and dusted the bits of urn from his robe. Teenagers, he shook his head. And that's how Gladys went from pecking through sheep dung to living in the royal palace. When Gladys's first tried a fig, she danced a boogie so vigorous that it tickled the learned princess to tears. The purple Poobah heard his daughter's laughter echoing through the halls of the palace, and he had to wonder if maybe the chicken really was magic. The learned princess spent all her time reading scrolls. They did not have books in ancient times. She longed to explore the wide world which she had read so much about, but her tutors feared for her safety, so they kept her locked in her room. The only one who brought her joy was Gladys, so she wrote a song. Gladys, the magic chicken, she can work her magic for you. Gladys, the magic chicken, make a wish and watch it come true. Her dancing is enchanting, and her eggs are tasty too. Gladys, the magic chicken, abra cock a doodle dee doo. The tune was a very catchy little ditty, and soon everyone in the kingdom was singing it. But while Gladys gladly gobbled figs, the learned princess gazed out her window at the shimmering sea and sighed. Her real wish was to escape from the palace. Crash! Bang! Boom! The learned princess shrieked as a fearsome pirate swung through the window, flipped through the air, and landed on the floor with a sword clenched in her teeth. Gladys let an egg go ploop. You're coming with me, threatened the fearsome pirate. I'm here to kidnap you for ransom. Hooray! squealed the learned princess. Hooray, asked the fearsome pirate. The learned princess happily packed her bags, mostly scrolls, a warm cloak, and, of course, Gladys. On the deck of the mighty pirate ship, the crew made merry and sang songs of the sea with the learned princess. They fed Gladys grapes and watched her dance. To adventure! The fearsome pirate raised her goblet and winked at the chicken. May it follow us wherever we go! Flaming arrows rained down from the sky. The ship was under attack. Rival pirates climbed aboard and drew their swords. A vicious fight broke out, claiming many lives and limbs. The learned princess managed to escape thanks to the valiant efforts of the fearsome pirate. But she wept as she rode away, for her beloved chicken was nowhere to be found. Relax, relax, Gladys was fine. This story has a happy ending. Calm down. Gladys wound up perched on the head of a drowning sailor who splashed and gasped and thrashed through the churning sea. Very few people learned proper swimming technique back in ancient times. Eventually, the drowning sailor grabbed hold 
of a floating plank of wood and prayed that he might somehow survive to sail another day. When the drowning sailor awoke, he was surprised to discover he had not drowned after all. Gladys hopped off his head to hunt for clams in the sand. Praise be the magic chicken that hath saved my life, shouted the no longer drowning sailor. Then he coughed up a bucket of seawater, lay down, and took a nap. A lone rider heard the shouting and approached the beach to investigate. Gladys pecked a clam from its shell, slurped it down her gullet, and did her little boogie dance. The lone rider smiled, which she hadn't done in a very long time. She dismounted her horse, scooped up the chicken, and decided to take her for a ride. They rode away from the sea, past the town, through the fields, and up toward the mountain pass. The horse galloped so hard and so fast it jostled an egg loose from the jingling chicken. As they approached the foothills, the road was blocked by a flock of sheep in dire need of shearing. Their shepherd had been distracted by his desperate search for a long-lost friend. Gladys, he exclaimed as he dropped to his knees. Forgive me, I smashed that cursed looking glass, what had consumed my mind. How I wished upon wish that I might find you again. The lone rider spied the shepherd's sturdy form and healthy mouth. And how I wished upon wish that I might find a worthy companion she whispered to her horse. And so the no longer a boy shepherd and the no longer lone rider and the dog and the sheep and of course Gladys made a very happy home in the mountains. Maybe Gladys never granted any wishes, but her song had already been written and the ballad was passed down from generation to generation and translated from one language to the next, forgotten, remembered, and eventually printed in this book so that someday you too could share the story of Gladys with someone who wishes to see magic in the world, even if they are only looking at a chicken. <laughs>